What's up you guys? So in this video, I wanted to talk about the steps of glycolysis. Um, this is something that we reviewed in class, but I just want to go over it. Um, there are a total of nine steps to glycolysis. Uh, some sources might say 10, but there's a step that we're just not gonna worry about. Um, and if we think about the term uh, or the word glycolysis, we can split it up into glyco and lysis. Glyco meaning sugar, lysis meaning to split or break. So we are essentially splitting uh, sugar, a six carbon molecule, into two three carbon molecules. So let's go through those steps. We'll start off with glucose, C6H12O6. So since we have a total of six carbons here, I'm going to uh, represent that with six circles. So we're going to say that the circles represent carbons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So we have our six carbon molecule, our six carbon glucose molecule. We then, through a series of three steps, and it's important to note that all steps in glycolysis are um, catalyzed by enzymes. So we don't need to know the names of those enzymes, but enzymes are driving this whole process. So uh, within the first three steps, we'll say this is step one, step two, and step three. In the first step, we have an ATP come through, uh, drop off its phosphate group. So this is phosphorylation. It drops off its phosphate group and becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate. So now it only has two phosphates. And in step three, we see that again. We see ATP come through, drop off one of its phosphates, and become ADP. So we have two different phosphorylation steps. You don't need to know the intermediates here, but after that, what we see is something along these lines. We see our six carbon molecule so our six carbon molecule with a phosphate on the first carbon and a phosphate on the sixth carbon. So there we just did uh, a double phosphorylation, if you will. And after this, what we're going to see is this molecule is uh, unstable. So it will break down into two three carbon molecules. two three carbon molecules, and these three carbon molecules are uh, G3P molecules. So G3P, or glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Uh, if you recall, we have seen this molecule before. We saw it in the uh, Calvin cycle, and I made a separate video just talking about glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So here we are seeing it again. Now let me adjust this slightly so you can see the board a little bit better and see what I'm drawing. So we have our glyceraldehyde three phosphate. What happens, and also notice we have two of them. So for each one of them, uh, we're going to go through a series of reactions, a series of steps. Um, so from this point forward, everything is going to be doubled. So we have our two G3P molecules and for these two G3Ps, we have two NAD pluses. And those two NAD pluses, which are coenzymes, uh, very similar to NADPH or NADP plus in uh, photosynthesis. We have two NAD pluses come through, pick up electrons, also pick up some hydrogens. And we have two NA. D H. And in this same process, in the same step, we kind of pull in two phosphates, two additional phosphate groups. And what we uh, are left with are two molecules that have a phosphate on this end, three carbons, and a phosphate on this end. So let me adjust this slightly. So hopefully you see that by adding two more phosphates, we are going to go from G3P, uh, two molecules with only one phosphate, 
to two molecules with two phosphates. And this process, so this would have been step four. This is now step five, or I'll keep the box around the numbers. So for step five, um, this is a redox reaction. Uh, if you recall, uh, reduction, if we think about the Leo says Ger, Leo says Ger, gain electrons were reduced, lose electrons were oxidized. So in this case, NAD plus gained electrons, so NADH is now a reduced molecule. So this is a redox reaction. And G3P gets oxidized in this process. Um, so while G3P is oxidized, NAD plus is reduced, hence a redox reaction. So we have our molecules going into step six. We had uh, two ATP, or two uh, ADP, rather, so diphosphates. Two ADP come along, and they uh, start to harvest those phosphates. So they are coming in, they're picking up those phosphates, and becoming two ATP. So now we pull the phosphate from one of each of these three carbon molecules, so now we have two three-carbon molecules with only one phosphate each. And then through a series of steps, three steps, one, two, three, this will be step seven, step eight, and step nine, we will end up with pyruvic acid, a three-carbon molecule, and two of those, and that's because during step nine, two more ADPs, adenosine diphosphates, come in, pick up those phosphates, and become two ATP molecules. And we're left with two molecules of pyruvic acid, also called pyruvate, pyruvate. So let's bring that a little bit closer so you can see. So we have our two molecules of pyruvate. We made the two molecules of NADH in step five. Uh, and we also gained four total ATP. Now, if you recall, we invested, move this back a little bit. We invested two ATP and got back four ATP. So our net gain of ATP is two. So we've gained two ATP. We've also uh, acquired two NADH, the electron carriers. And we also end with two pyruvate, or pyruvic acid. So two ATP goes to the cell to be used for some type of cellular work. Uh, two NADH, those are electron carriers, so they're gonna head off to the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. Electron transport chain. And the two pyruvates are headed to the next stage of uh, cellular respiration, or the Krebs cycle also called the citric acid cycle. So that is glycolysis. I'll put glycolysis here. And just to come full circle, glyco means sugar, lysis means to split or break. So we started off with a six carbon sugar and we ended with two three carbon molecules. So we split sugar. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and uh, I will see you for the next video.